uh, Chairman Abercrombie and Moore and Ranking Member Case. I'm here to testify in favor of um, House Bill 5306, an act concerning temporary state services for victims of domestic violence. And I want to thank the committee for raising this bill. Um, I think the issue of what we're trying to address is, um, you know, recently we've heard from some of our domestic service um, uh, agencies who will also testify today that there's sort of a barrier for people that are trying to get out of a bad situation. And um, often state assistance is what will help them get out on their own. When they make an application, the accused abusing spouse's income automatically sort of gets pulled in and could disqualify them from being able to get services that they need to start the road of rebuilding their life. But I think the intention, as you just heard from Representative Candelar, is really about getting, having women, mostly women, and children safe and uh, being able to move out of a home that's, um, and we've talked to women that just won't move out because they don't have the financial resources. What this bill um, is attempting to do is provide a 90-day period or some sort of a period similar to what we do with Medicaid. We have that 90-day reasonable opportunity period where somebody could apply for Medicaid. Um, if their citizenship cannot be established, they are automatically eligible for the Medicaid benefits. And um, the, the benefits are given to them and, and then in that 90-day period, they're then qualified. If it's determined that um, they're not a citizen, they lose the benefits. If it's determined that they are a citizen, they get the benefits. Um, I know that federal law is what allows for the state to do that, and we adopted it probably six or seven years ago. Um, and so we're seeking to try to sort of model it similarly with appropriate safeguards. So um, if the income is disqualified, you know, there could be a showing that the person has maybe applied for a protective order, has moved out of the house, um, is on their own and independent from that, that abusing spouse um, so that the income wouldn't, wouldn't be qualified. A lot of this came from Women and Family Life, some of the ideas that, that's in Guilford. And today I'd like to introduce Tara Clark, who's a social worker for um, Women and Family Life and who, who sees this firsthand. And I'd like to yield the rest of my time to her if that's okay. One area of support that has proven time and again to be integral to women gaining freedom from abusive partners is access to our state's human services. Yet we have found issues in gaining access to these programs for one of our most vulnerable populations, domestic violence victims who are trying to leave abusive partners. Unfortunately, in these complex cases, we have found that the eligibility criteria for state assistance has disqualified many women who should qualify. One example is the case uh, of someone who I'll refer to as M. M and I had been working together for some months, navigating the beginnings of her divorce process from a physically, emotionally, and financially, uh, financially abusive partner. While M's spouse did not provide any financial assistance to her besides sharing their residence, when I began making calls regarding her application and eligibility, I found that M would not be eligible for needed assistance, like snapping care for kids. I was told that because she did not yet live in a separate residence from her spouse, her spouse's income would have to be counted in her application materials, despite the fact that she could not access his financial accounts, and he did not help her financially. It is with this in mind that our staff at Woman and Family Life Center would like to recommend that HB 5306 be passed. I understand this bill is still in the drafting process and acknowledge we have to abide by federal law, but I also want to ask that a solution be found to better address the needs of domestic violence victims and their access to our state human services. Uh, the, passes, the passage of HB 5306 would be instrumental for many women in Connecticut who are facing the challenging life, life circumstances of leaving an abuser and finding the resources to sustain themselves and their children. I want to thank the committee for listening to this testimony. Any comments, questions? Representative Wood. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you both for being here. I think it's really lovely and so important that we hear from those of us outside the legislature and not that we're all don't have good voices too but I think your experience on the ground and you were very articulate about that and it gives it extra dimension so thank you for taking the time and Representative Corcoruda thank you for bringing her up here.